So unless you're living under a rock, you're probably aware of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is Quentin Tarantino's ninth film, and it was hella hyped because the guy made classics like Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, and Inglorious Bastards. He has this filmmaking style that no one has ever really been able to duplicate. There's been copies, but they never really match the quality of something made by the man himself. If you don't know, this movie is a historical revision of the 60s Charles Manson murders in LA. The story follows two fictional characters, but they're surrounded by people that were actually part of the real life story like Sharon Tate, played here by Margot Robbie. Before going into this film, I knew almost nothing about the true story the movie was inspired from, so there were lots of details that I realized I missed on my first viewing. So I highly recommend watching some sort of documentary or 60 minutes video on the subject so that you know some of the characters that are going into this. But anyway, moving on to the real meat of this video, I walked out of this movie feeling pretty disappointed. The reason why being pretty simple. I just didn't like the story structure of this film. It's very unconventional, which I guess makes it unique and very Tarantino, but it ended up leaving me mildly bored throughout. During the film, there's never really a plot. The movie just follows the three main characters, but without having any clear goals that tie their stories together. It's just each one doing random stuff during their day. Leo's character is probably the closest one to having an arc, but otherwise there's not really much to it. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the scenes were still really entertaining and had that classic Tarantino dialogue, but I kept thinking throughout the movie, when are all of these characters' storylines gonna converge? But more importantly, what's the point of this movie? The film is two hours and 45 minutes, so I continually kept thinking that maybe Tarantino Tarantino was just slowly developing these characters so that when the real story starts we'll care more about them, but that didn't really happen until the last 20 minutes. Even then it felt sort of flimsy because one of the characters wasn't even a part of it. So after the movie I went online to watch some reviews to get a sense of what I was missing and why this film was so highly praised by critics. Chris Stuckman and Jeremy Johns are pretty well established reviewers on YouTube, which is why I'm using them for a comparison. Both had very different opinions that I think explain my conflicted thoughts on the film. Jeremy had the same thoughts that I did about the lack of a narrative. I'm here with my dick in my hand like, well I mean yeah, I'm enjoying it for one watch. I mean you can tell the talent's still there in the writing, dialogue, filming, execution, directing. But it's the driving force in this movie, it just feels weak for a lot, about an hour and a half into this movie I was like, where are we going? Other than a couple guys just trying to be like, am I too old for this shit? I might be too old for this shit. I feel like things were happening, but nothing was really happening. Other than a film got made in a film, and in the end, I just, I felt like this movie comes across as a bit indulgent. I completely agree with this because as I watched the movie, I did feel bored and curious about the ultimate goal of the movie and each of the characters. I also agree with Jeremy's take on the finale. One sweet ass fucking scene's not gonna make me go, oh, the whole two hour, 40 minute ordeal. It's all good now. Chris's review, however, felt more whole and that he actually mentioned more of the counterpoints that people like Jeremy and I would bring up. A friend of mine after the screening tonight said that was kind of like Seinfeld. And I can understand why they thought that because in a way the film doesn't always feel like it has a narrative. And that's one of the things I love about Tarantino. His movies don't follow the rules. They don't follow classic cinema structure. You can look at his screenplays and think, how does he get away with this? And that's what's beautiful about what he does. This is different from everything out there today, as is every Tarantino film that was ever put into a theater at that time. You can go to this movie, and even if it isn't height Tarantino, which it's not, this is not his best film or anything, but you can go to this movie and know that it's going to be better than just about everything else out right now. He continues to mention that some of the greatest Tarantino films are just a collection of really well acted, directed, and written moments, which is true. That's why I love Pulp Fiction. That movie didn't have a clear, straight line narrative, but what made it fascinating to me was how each of the scenes connected to each other. Everything was connected in some way and each moment had something different going on, whether it be new characters, locations, or situations that continue to flesh out the world of these characters. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is somewhat similar, but there were lots of times where the movie would switch between different characters' scenes, but they would be doing the same thing in the same place that we saw them do in the last scene. This kind of slowed down the movie's pacing for me, because switching back and forth between between scenes, but seeing the same settings and situations continuing repeatedly made the movie feel like it was running in place, especially in the second act. And without a clear narrative, that just made the whole thing feel more pointless. Margot Robbie's character especially had nothing much to do in this movie, and basically never interacts with the other two main characters. But I do agree with Chris in that I do think this movie is better than anything else out right now. Yeah, so I'm looking at the movies right now, and literally the only thing on here that I would say is better is Endgame but that's honestly in a league of its own. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. 
Chris also goes on to talk about how in this day and age, people aren't as accepting of this style of filmmaking. Again, I feel like today, we have become so accustomed to the way current movies play out. Every scene's gotta mean something. Every scene has to happen right fucking now. Something has always gotta be going on. We're really accustomed to that. We are being trained to expect that all movies are supposed to flow in a certain way. This movie is a 1960s film. It doesn't feel like a movie that was made in 2019. It just, it feels like a film that was made in the 60s, just with better production values. And that's what I love about it. You don't get movies like this anymore and I will always support that. This is something I agree with because it literally happened to me. I had the expectation that this movie was gonna have a compelling plot that had all these characters interacting with each other to achieve a similar goal, since most every movie that comes out nowadays follows that baseline formula. It's such a standard thing that I found that the lack of a clear narrative in this movie stuck out in my mind as a crucial flaw. When watching the movie, I thought back to films like Pulp Fiction and No Country for Old Men because I liked those films even though they had unconventional story structures. I think it's because they had more focus though, especially No Country for Old Men. That was one that was closest to a normal film. However, even though I didn't enjoy Tarantino's style as much this time around, I still agree with Chris in that it's probably the most interesting movie you could watch right now. It reminded me of movies like Glass or Us. Those two in my mind aren't the greatest films, but I admire them so much because they have interesting and unique takes on their genres. Glass was technically a superhero movie, but it didn't fall into any of the conventions of your average DC or Marvel movie. Us wasn't as good as I hoped, especially following up the greatness of Get Out, but the social commentary and symbolic nature of every scene made it something worth watching and discussing. Basically what I'm saying is that movies like these, even if they're not 10s out of 10s to me, at least help shake up the movie landscape. And like Chris, I will always support that.